Philippine literature has gained international recognition in recent years, especially when it comes to general fiction and fantasy. The stories of Ibong Adarna, Darna, and Captain Barbell are popular in the Philippines given our rich heritage of folklore and mythology. Science fiction, on the other hand, are so rare and precious that it's only once in a while when they come out. This is about to change. Let us meet Filipino-Australian sci-fi author Renato Tranquilino and let us explore the world of Pinoy sci-fi with his sci-fi book, Fate of a Distant Future. Well, you know, um, I have a lot of respect for writers. And so I, I tend to call myself more of a storyteller with, with a team of people that help me create my stories. And, and, and so I started off really being a filmmaker. I, I learned how to do films when I was in New York. And then I, I brought it over when, when, uh, when I moved to the Philippines back in 2014. Uh, my intention was really to create a, a sci-fi film, but because I didn't have enough funds to actually even do a trailer for that because of the cost of CGI and all that, I decided to, okay, switch over to trying to, 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 to write. Okay, so I converted my script into, um, in, into an actual story. Uh, and, and, and wrote it out. And so that's when I hired people to ed be my editors and all that. Uh, I'm writer in progress, if you could call it that. So I'm not one of those traditional writers that went through school and, and did writing classes and whatnot. So I basically come from an angle of like, I have a story in my head and then I use the English language to actually make it come to life. But yeah, so th that's, that's me in a nutshell. I'm an IT guy as well too. I currently work for Cisco. Um, and um, and I, I write in my spare time. The, the one I'm currently promoting to Germany, which was also um, pushed, like uh, promoted last year, is called Fate of a Distant Future, which talks about the Philippines as it becomes a powerhouse in terms of a planet colonizing country. Um, the uh, it was it was uh, I was grateful to the National Book Development Board for actually promoting it last year, and again at the PBF this year it was one of the uh, one of the foremost like uh, sci-fi books um, that that was being sold, um, and it's basically four stories um, uh, generated with you know, different generations, but they kind of loosely connected to each other. And it talks about the trials and tribulation of the Philippine, the Philippines as a nation on how they got to where they did in this futuristic fiction that I, that, that uh, world that I created for them. And it's a precursor to the trilogy that I'm writing right now. So I'm almost halfway through book one. So that's, that's basically what Fate of a Distant Future is about. Now, a lot of people in, in, would ask, so what's Philippine, what's Philippine science fiction? Is it dystopic? Is it like apocalyptic? The way I, I describe Philippine science fiction is um, it's kind of progressive, but it, 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 it kind of also talks about how basically we need to fix things now whilst we're still on earth before we become a spacefaring nation because then problems would be a lot worse than what we're experiencing now so it's it, it kind of goes on those sort of lines like uh, the way the way philippine story the philippine sci-fi stories the way i write them um uh, progresses The world is always looking for something new, okay, uh, to be seen on the big screen. And I think um, with our culture and, and what we have to offer as a nation, they've experienced that already, but 
seeing it on a sci-fi kind of angle is, is going to wow them for sure. So this is kind of like a race for any, any investor to be able to invest on Philippine sci-fi done correctly. You've also got the merchandising, right? So it, it's a whole line of merchandising and games that can be developed uh, via the Philippine science fiction angle. And so, again, done right. So there, there's a considerable amount of revenue that can be garnered from, from this specific sci-fi genre, you know, which is the Pinoy sci-fi. And, and of course, let's not forget, I mean, this is going to be covered in my, in my um, presentation anyway. The population of the Philippines is 110 million. Granted, it's not, not all of them can afford, uh, are in the um, uh, above the poverty. I think there's like, was that 60, 70% below the poverty line? But those guys, even below the poverty line, can afford to watch a movie. I mean, even if we get, if we get like 10% or less than 10% of that, we're still going to be doing well in, in, in the box office, you know. This is bringing Philippine science fiction to a Hollywood level. We're talking, again, this is going to be covered in, in, in my presentation. We're looking at like a $15, $20 million production. At PBF, I've been talking to a lot of um, uh, really prominent writers, Philippine writers. One of them being uh, John, uh, John, uh, John Paul Salud um, and uh, Christian Cordero. Uh, these are, are heavy hitters, and, and they're starting to write um, science fiction, specifically Philippine science fiction. It's, it's only just a matter of bringing in the other, like, heavy-duty um, uh, filmmakers like Keith Seacott, Eric Mati, into, into the fold, and then have them start to create these, these um, CGI, wonderfully uh, rendered CGI images and stuff on, on, on sci-fi with great Philippine stories. And I think we're on our way. I, I think that it, it's really going to wow, like, you know, can uh, Europe, um, you know, and, and again, the, 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 this opportunity is open to anybody in the world. So to our German compatriots and, and to German investors, I think this is, this is something that's worth uh, investing in. And, and, and we have a number of um, uh, places in the Philippines, uh, sites that, that can be used as uh, for background that that really looks exotic any any politician any administration would like uh to be remembered for for something uh to create a award-winning or a, a multi a hollywood budget level kind of sci-fi with with philippine actors in it that 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 will create a, a line in a box office and especially home at the, at the home i think it's a big statement in terms of uh, a boost in, in also in the cinematic um, in a cinematic area for, for the Philippines, you know, we need like um, heavy hitters from from the administration or the the the, the movie industry uh, locally to support this this kind of movement, and so then we can we can move in 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 a different direction, but in a positive direction again where. It might even positively unite the, the, the views of people in, in, in the country, uh, in the Philippines, uh, towards something positive. So uh, very hopeful, very uh, a hopeful venture, yeah, like to say the least. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, to, to, to fellow writers, uh, you know, never, never, never be embarrassed to share your stories, uh, you know, in, in the field of uh, Philippine science fiction. I know it's not very popular at the moment. Um, go, go and write it, finish it, and, and push it. And and there are certainly now a lot more people that are that are waking up and getting in touch with the with the younger the the the, the child the the, the child um, dream, childhood dreams of of rocket ships and spaceships and and traveling into space. So so that's that's um, kind of connecting with with the the existing uh, the, the 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 popular writers now, so they they harking back on that um, on that era. I think uh, 
definitely like look into Pinoy sci-fi and reach out and and uh and I think especially Germany where we have a very strong connection with in terms of trade uh and and, and representation um yeah like yeah push through push, push definitely push through with Pinoy sci-fi